fans of a Horus Heresy, Warhammer 40,000 and alternative resin science fiction vehicles for 28mm wargaming, thank you very much for joining me for an episode where we're going to take a look at a very interesting and unusual kit by Ratguard. So I have been very busy with all sorts of stuff in the world of life over the last few weeks. I haven't posted as many videos as I normally like to do, which isn't to say I haven't got a lot going on, which of course you can imagine me in the hobby. I've got loads going on. So as a little New Year's Eve stroke New Year's treat, I thought I'd do an unboxing of this tank that's arrived. Now I've got lots of projects going on and this was a bit of a, shall we say, advanced purchase because the manufacturer, Ratguard, only seem to do these in limited batches, so I wanted to get hold of one while it was available. So I hope you're suitably intrigued, and without further ado, let's open this up and take a look. So we've got a box here. It's come from China. It's had a bit of a whack, so I'm hoping it's going to be okay. It seems it seems to be a decent amount of padding inside, so I hope this will be all right. The only way to find out is to open it up. Now, this model is what's called the Leader Rats M1 tank. And if you don't know, or if you haven't heard about Ratguard, and it was one of you guys and girls who pointed it out to me a number of months back, Ratguard basically make, shall I say, resin conversion kits for 40K plastic vehicles, um, and Imperial Guard ones at that. And they do a series of Lehman Rust tanks, which is what's called the Leader Rats tank. And this in here is the latest generation of that particular vehicle. Now, previous kits have been conversion kits for Games Workshop plastic chassis. I think, if I've read it right, that this is actually a full resin kit, and it, it looks absolutely beautiful. We don't need the box. So inside, we've got some bubble wrap with some parts in it, and then, an instruction sheet so whoa, squeaky squeaky right let's take a look at the instruction sheet first so have as i say here's the manufacturer which is rat guard this is a leader rats m1 battle tank if you're wondering what size this is this is lehman rust sized we have a parts list and as we can see this is a complete resin kit so everything's in it it's actually a mixed media kit because as well as resin components we actually have a metal barrel here for one of the cannons and it is designed to be configured in one of one two three four ways a battle tank a prowler tank with twin cannons a battle tank with long barreled cannon great for vanquishing your opponents and then an apocalypse variant with a twin long barreled cannons and it has a little asterisk there i think that might mean you need an extra cannon there you go here <laughs> parts not included in the set got some instructions which look reasonably clear Certainly anyone who's familiar with assembling Forge World models, I don't think you're going to have much trouble dealing with something like this. These look like they'll magnetise nicely, so that's great. Okay. Ah, and oh, hello. A variety of other weapons that you could put in the cannon barrel position as well. Right, well that's enough instructions, I think. Let's actually have a look at the kit. Oh gosh, that's squeaky, isn't it? As I say, as far as I can tell from my communications with Ratguard, they do these in limited production runs. I had to wait a few months before this came back into stock, but I'm glad I did, and it was. I'm hoping it'll be worth the wait. We've got a whole series of resin components, and then, as we said, we have a metal barrel. Now let's start with this because this looks absolutely beautiful. You might say that quality in military models come with machined metal barrels and this feels, weight wise, I would say this is aluminium. And you can see that that's very nicely turned out. Beautifully done. And the reason for this is of course, thin resin barrels will warp sometimes over their own weight, even in ambient temperature so I live in the United Kingdom you know fairly temperate climate I've seen thin resin barrels warp over time under their own weight if you live in the hotter parts of the world where you may have ambient temperatures into the 30s or even the 40s then you will certainly experience problems with longer parts warping and you know metal parts like this are specifically designed to combat that and there's also other advantages in terms of the quality of the item turned out you know there's absolutely no flaws on that whatsoever it's perfect and talking of quality that is going to be very interesting to look at so this is a heat sealed packet so we'll start 
with the main body and we'll open it up and we'll look at the different parts. Now, you know me, I'm a big fan of resin vehicles and I'm always fascinated to see how well the art is carried out by different manufacturers. I've not got any experience of buying a resin kit from China. I've seen some reviews of Gundam kits, resin full kits that have been made in places like Hong Kong and I've had some sort of discussion with some people who bought them who said they were very high quality and it's going to be interesting to see what these are like. So without further ado, let's have a look. First thing that strikes me about this, very dry. Ah, okay. Ah, so we have a top and a bottom. Oh, there you go. So that makes sense to reduce weight. It's been de-keyed, so the key's been taken off, but it's been done in a careful way. They've left the key attachment for you to sort out, so you can do carefully with tools like that. We've got some striations here. I'm not sure if this is from 3D printing. Most of these are going to be hidden by the side units. Might need a bit of sanding work there. It's very sharp, very crisp details. And nice angles on this as well. Yeah, that all looks beautifully done. Really, really nice. Really, really, really nice. Not sure what this is here. Maybe just a bit of discoloration in the resin. Touching it with my finger, there's no, what do you call it? There's no sort of physical effect on the surface of the kit. Uh, then we've got the lower hull. Got some great detailing there. Got what looks like an escape hatch perhaps. Ooh, a nice affirmative fit. Clever using a tongue and groove style system to locate the part. Might be a little bit of heat bending to get a, a snug fit on that, so it's a little bit tight, or maybe just trimming a bit of material away. But it looks it's like it's a good shape. I think that's a bit warped. I'm not sure if it is warped or if it's just the sizing. But I think that is going to line up very well. Right, let's do the tracks, or the track units, should I say. So as you can see, we've got tracks on the track units, so we don't have any faffing around with that most disagreeable of production techniques with separate tracks. So these are, again, so these are gonna be, yeah, look at that, separate, separate side. So one thing about this is these are quite thin, not unreasonably thin, um, but something to, I suppose, be aware of. I mean, again, the, the quality, I mean, just look at the quality of the casting on that. I mean, that's not just good, that's that's flawless, that looks to be. And I'm struggling to see any mould seams at all. Oh, there we go, there's a mould seam, right. So it's been put down this edge here. So there might be a, a bit of trimming, a tiny bit of filling to do there. Yeah, really good. Very nice armor details as well. Now I've bought this, well, I suppose as a curioso, I like these interesting models. I really enjoy building them. I've also bought it for my kind of ever-growing militia for survivors of the Dark Age of Technology. It's also going to have uses for my Sailor Auxilia force as well. And it'll go nicely with my Victoria Miniatures Matilda tank. Excellent, let's do this one. So we've got the same drill here. Cost-wise, this was, uh, was this $69.99? I think it was $69.99. So you do the math and work it out. I mean, price-wise, it's probably about equivalent to some of the Forge World Lehman Russ plastic conversion kits. So, for example, the riser pattern. And that's a complete kit with the plastic components in as well. Such a beautiful fit there. Yeah, I mean, that's, just clipping that together, that's the sort of fit I would associate with a plastic kit. Right, now we've got a few more bits and bobs in here. I think these are some armor plates. So these sections here are armor plates that are going to go on the top 
the track units. I'm not entirely sure how they go. I mean, I've just put that on my own and I think that's probably the correct position. Yeah. I guess these really count as being optional because you wouldn't have to put them on if you just wanted to see the tracks or you could put them on to make the vehicle look up armored. But again, everything very nicely cast and such dry, crisp parts as well. I mean, as usual, I'll give this a wash for cleaning off mold release. A little bit of a seam to clean up there. But they do look very good. A little bit of filling to do there and there. These two as well. Mm. And I've got a few small bits here. So there's a couple of track links, which look great. And then some sort of heavy weapon that could be mounted in the hull. Maybe a, um, a heavy variant of an explosive tipped bolt launcher. Right, that's that bit. So then we've got a second bag again. It's a heat sealed bag. And we've got what looks like all the ancillary components. So let's start off with the turret. Right, this is one of the things that really sold me about this tank, was the brilliant turret design. Really, really cool looking. Very, what you almost might call, neo-Soviet styling. Well, it does put me in mind of some of the later T-series tank designs. And again, it's got an upper and a lower. So let's have a look around then. Yeah. Really nice details up on top. Very crisp, very sharp as the other parts we've looked at so far. You know, various hatches, maybe, you know, ammo ejector ports. This, this does look like an ammo ejector port. You know, something like the T90 or that style tank, or say T90 is a whole variety of T-series tanks, all the way from the 64 that had auto loaders and a rear shell ejector. And then that's a mounting point for the main gun. So talk about the mounting point, we get, we get two gun mounts. So we get the dual cannon mount, which is this one, and then a single cannon mount, which is this one. And if everything goes well, there you go, that is going to go in there like so, I believe. That's going to go in there like that. The hole's a bit shallow actually for that, so that will need drilling out to, uh, to put it all the way in. And then the dual gun mount as well. Yeah, very nice. I'm not sure if you wanted to do the twin long-barreled cannon where you'll get a second long-barreled cannon from. I don't know if uh, lead rats do those. Anyway, let's continue on. And here we have a nice combat accessory with a mine plow type device. Looks rather neat, doesn't it? Got a bit of um, mold seam to clean up running around it. I certainly want to spend some time cleaning that up, otherwise it's going to be rather obvious on the final vehicle. But, it's not too bad, and it will go away. Yeah, it's good, I like that. And that's, I guess, going to attach onto the underside of the vehicle, like so. Okay, and then next we've got a couple of cannon barrels. Are these identical? Yes, they are. So there's two identical cannon barrels. It's going to fulfill the role of doing the single cannon variant and then the double cannon variant as well. Again, the mounting posts are quite long. So either you're going to need to increase the depth of a hole on these mounts, I think. Or in the case of these, you could cut them off shorter. You could cut that off as well, you know, the aluminium one. I would um, suggest it's worth leaving the longer pin on it because of its length. All right, then we've got all sorts. So we've got this bit here, which is, what does this do? Oh, right, so we've got two sponsons. There you go. Nice entry hatch or escape hatch. They're gonna go on the side of the tanks. Then we've got a fuel tank, a long range fuel tank to mount on the rear. Got a bit of a slip to clean up here, that's uh, not so attractive. How big is it? Not too bad. Yeah, that is fixable. It's one of those things you could fill it, you could trim it down or something in between. But it will fix up, I think. A bit more than out of light, but comparable. This is the uh, engine deck, so this is like the air intake for the engines and the cooling. Now, what's this? This is a searchlight or a targeting array, and that's going to mount on top of the turret like so. Yeah. Okay, so these two parts are the insides of the sponsons, and they've got the mounting brackets 
to go onto the side of the holes, like so. Yep. And then we've got the, what's this? Oh, this is a storage bin of some sort to go on the back of a turret. Cool, I like that, I think. Storage bins on turrets give them a good look. Right, and then finally, we've got a selection of detail parts to get out. Right, there's all sorts in here, so where should we start, right? So let's start with, there are four sets of exhaust stacks, or four exhaust stacks, which are going to go on the rear of the vehicle. Like so, so that's going to look really groovy with those on. Yeah, do like that. Ah, uh, they go like that, yeah. You get four of those. They would look, um, I didn't really show you those very well. The reason was they're all perfectly formed. Very nice on a circular part like that. We then have some spaced armor plates for the turret. Like that, and those are going to go on like so. Let's just go back to the instructions. There we go, we can see the spaced armor applied to the turret. Yeah, that's really groovy. Going back to the sponsons, we've got the two mounting cylinders for the heavy weapons that are going to go in those. We've got a variety of cupola parts and hatches here. Oh, I've got these, it's beautifully done. Got some nice periscopes and the like mounted on those. Quite delicate detail designs these. To be honest, that's a very uh, Quite a brave shape to cast that in resin. It's not bad actually, it doesn't look bad at all. Might just need a little straightening. Oh gosh, and there's lots of little tiny bits here. Where am I gonna start with these? There's another targeting scope to go on the turret. Then we've got a short barreled cannon, is it? Oh no, no, sorry, this isn't a short barreled cannon. This is a muzzle brake for the long barreled gun. It's gonna go on like that. That looks really cool. With the weapon options you get in this kit, there's clear opportunities to magnetize and make it modular, which is ace, I do like that. These two parts here, which I don't know what they do yet, but I'll figure those out later. For purposes of this review, they look fine. These are a couple of components, again, doing details on the sponsons, I believe. Yep, these are the actual weapon mounts at the heavy weapon. So here we have the explosive tipped bolt launcher again. That's going to go on like so. You could magnetize those, get two of those, so that's three. So you could do one in the hull here, which is going to sit in this ball mount. Very reminiscent of a Panther tank machine gun position from the hull of that vehicle. A searchlight for the turret. A couple of little bits of cleanup to do that. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. These are smoke dispensers, so smoke launchers to go on the applique armor on the turret, on the spaced armor. They're gonna look super groovy. And that's something that a lot of resin kit manufacturers miss at the moment, putting some smoke launchers in. Because in game, when you're playing 40K, most Imperial vehicles have a smoke launcher, but very few manufacturers actually give you the parts to put those on. So big thumbs up to Ratguard for getting that detail right. A couple of headlights. Very nice. Oh, gosh, a couple of little details. I mean, there's a couple more lights there. A towing hook. Beautiful little details, these really are. And another sight mount, or perhaps a periscope. Oh, this is, I think this is a driver's vision mount. Oh, yeah, vision portal, let's call it. And then to finish with, we've got a selection of heavy weapons, which you can mount either in the hull or the sponsors. So there are single ones. So here, let's have a look at the single ones. We've got this weapon here, which to me looks like a multiple barreled laser. Bit of a seam to clean away there and ditto on the underside. But overall, good. Then we've got a heavy directed energy weapon cannon. Yeah, a laser cannon. Familiar design. So there's another hull and position weapon. And then we have three final weapons. Vehicle mount of flamethrowers, so heavy flamethrowers. Look pretty good. That one, mmm. They look pretty good apart from this one. Where we've just got some slightly grotty mold slippage on the underside. Look on the top. Um, a bit there as well. I'll have to have a play around with that, see how that turns out when I clean it up. I think that'll probably be okay, actually. 
the a bit of creative knife work. But yeah, three of those. So you can put one in each sponson and one in the hull if you wish. So in terms of weapon versatility, it's quite good, isn't it? Because you get one, two, three, four weapons to put in the hull gun position. Then you get two different weapons to go in the sponsons, so the heavy bolt launcher and the heavy flamethrower. And then you get all the weapon options for the main gun position as well. So the only thing that you might then want to add to that would be a pintle weapon mount in one of the turrets. Um, I think that's the only extra weapon you might wish to add. But good versatility there, lots of options given in this kit. It's always nice to see manufacturers coming up with these versatile kits and we're seeing it more and more at the moment with Forge Wall giving more and more weapon options and the means for the modeler to easily integrate those into the final model. The Matilda tank by Victoria Miniatures did a very good job of having versatile modular weapons and then this by Ratguard, the Leader Rats M1 tank also excellent selection of weapons. So yeah, really encouraging to see. I hope you found that an interesting review. This is a beautiful looking kit. It's a fascinating kit as well. I don't know when I'm gonna build it. I've got quite a lot of projects on the go at the moment. I wanted to get hold of one while it was still in manufacture and I'm really pleased I have. Please do share your thoughts and observations around this tank in the comments section. As always, I'll be very interested to hear what you think, particularly if you've got any previous experience of buying from Ratguard and building their models. I know a couple of you have told me things about them before. If anyone else has got them, you know, please do share your experiences as well. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Well, that's the end of 2017, and what a year it has been for Channel Leaky Cheese, and what a year it's been in the hobby. There's been a tremendous amount of stuff that's happened. There's been a tremendous amount of stuff that's happened. I really hope you've enjoyed this year with the channel. I hope you've had a great year in the hobby and in life in general. So bye bye 2017, and it's time to welcome in 2018. Just to finish then, I'd just like to thank each and every one of you for being a part of Channel Leaky Cheese and engaging in the videos. I really appreciate that. Everyone who follows me on Twitter as well. If you don't follow me on Twitter, I put all sorts of stuff on Twitter, so that's something you may want to do. It's not as bad as you might think. And I would also like to offer my special heartfelt thanks to all my patrons who support the channel as well. But other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and Happy New Year 2018.